this video, I got a question from a viewer. His name is Mike Washington, and the way he puts it to me is this way. He says, I have a 2001 Cadillac DeVille, and his pass key 3 stopped working, and he sees I have a video on how to do it using an extra, an extra key. The problem with this dude is that he has no key. So the problem is that his chip in his key is not sending a signal to his transceiver, and it won't crank the car over. He just, he's desperate. He needs help. Well, Mr. Washington, we're going to see what we can do for you. So before I get started on this topic of how to integrate and hopefully eliminate your problem with your passkey 3, let me first say this in a way that I've said this to everybody in my entire career of over 20 years in this business, that this is a, a risky venture. It's not going to do any damage. You can definitely make not, nothing that you have done or is going on in your vehicle currently any worse. It can only do good. However, the downside is that this does not work for every application. Why is it that, it that it can work for some and not so much for others is this why, this way. When you're working with regular voltages and you can test things with test lights and you know standard electrical testing equipment, it's one thing to, to look back at your work and see in the field if you're doing things properly. But when you're working with systems that are data bus controlled or CAN bus controlled, in your case it's data bus controlled, you cannot verify anything, okay? It's just, it's just impossible. You, you can't do it. So there is no tool, there is no way to test it. You can, it's called try it and see how it goes and hope for the best and expect the worst. So with that said, if you can expect the best and be a positive person and hope for the best and expect the worst, you're going to be very satisfied with the end result. Okay, I don't want people to watch this view, view my ideas, respect my thoughts, go ahead and do and, and, and apply the techniques that I'm going to discuss with you to find that out there that it does not work. because. I can't give you an exact, you know, percentage of how it works in my own history and my experience over the years. I could say that maybe I had success 85% of the time. That's just a number that came rushing to my head. But then again, this is what I do. This is my profession. This is my livelihood. This is what I've done my whole life, and I've dedicated myself to being the best that I can be in my art. For the average person, you may not have such good. Uh, statistics and, and good percentages. However, you do have me because if you have a question, I actually do help people and I'll help you just like I helped many people over the years with or without salary. I'm not looking to get paid. I'm just looking to help people. That's just what I do. Is what this channel is all about. If you don't know, that's what we do here, man. So here I have uh, a diagram and this is basically a very simple electrical diagram of what you need to do and secondly there's another part to it you're going to need to purchase a component okay now when you purchase a component i would expect that you buy it from me because you know i you know i like to make some money i mean there's nothing wrong with making some money so i'm going to ask you know with any without any reserve please buy it from me do me a favor buy it from me uh, because it's nice when you ask me for help and then i reciprocate by giving it to you because that's really the way things should work i hope if you don't buy it from me that's okay too I, I, i'm not going to be mad but here's, here's what I'm going to say that you're going to do, okay? Now, I went to the back, and this here is an older bypass. When I say an older bypass, I say an older bypass because this one here is a module which is working with data bus systems like yours, your 2001 Cadillac. The wiring, you can see there's four wires that need to be connected to this bypass in order for it to work. Nowhere on here are you going to find anything that's CAN bus controlled or anything to too futuristic what you're going to find in today's models in 2014 and the like. Okay, Your vehicle is equipped with a, sim a simple data bus wire which does all the communication to your body, to your body control module, electronic control module, etc. Okay, Only things that you need is one of these. Should you have one, use it. If not, this here is a standard relay. Okay, Doesn't matter what kind. It's a, it's a single pole double throw relay. And I actually brought a, a 10 inch pre-wired socket for my relay because it makes it a lot easier because when you install this you got to put it by your ignition harness and you're going to have all these wires running one to this bypass and, and that's going to communicate to your car's computer so it's, it's cu it sub cuts out and simplifies all the wiring part of this whole job so these are really the main things you need to get now the relay is a relay I'll put a link at the bottom if you want to buy one from my site that's where you can find the link to go ahead and get one without asking me if you're getting the right one or not as far as this part the bypass module I'm going to put another link there, but you got to, you got to do a little bit of work if you want this to work for yourself, your application. This one video is not just for, for you, Michael. This is for everybody who's watching this video, and I know there's thousands of you that are watching this, this, this video desperate to find a solution to your problem. Now, to get the right bypass for your car, 
make sure you go to caralarm.com or, not that I like them, expresskit.com with the letter X, expresskit.com or caralarm.com, preferably caralarm.com because that's the Omega brand and I'd rather see Omega get the business than Express Kit because that's from DEI and I, I hate that company. So once you go on there, you're gonna type in your year, make, and model of your vehicle and it's gonna give you all the choices for the, for the bypass kit that's gonna work for your application, okay? Now, you're gonna have to purchase that one kit. If you're not sure exactly which one it is, if you're not 100% sure if it's CAN bus or if it's data bus, you can find out very easily by educating yourself and reading the PDF. Take five minutes, read the manual, educate yourself what it is that you need to be getting. Get the one that's made for data bus, not for CAN bus. Um, however, one that works with CAN bus would probably work, but for my tutorial and the way I'm doing things, because this is my thing, I'm going to say stick with the simplest stuff, the data bus stuff, okay? Get that. Like I said, if you need help holding your hand, so to speak, to get the right one, you're welcome to ask. So that's what we're here for. So you're going to need to buy the bypass. Go to carloan.com, put in your year, make, and model, find out the application for the bypass. You're going to buy that. You're going to buy the relay. If you want the socket to make your life a little easier, do that as well. Moving along. Okay, so now that we have, so now that we have our relay and our pre-wired harness, I'm just going to use this because it makes my life a little easier for my purposes to demonstrate it to you. This is what is going to be in the vehicle that you need to be concerned with. First thing, which everybody has, is the ignition harness and a key. Now GM has a pass key. Uh, that's what Michael Washington, the person who asked back this question for his, his system, he is a real super desperado, okay? Now he has no key, okay? So for your case, you would actually have to duplicate the function of the key through wiring. You're going to have to actually take a wire, say the red wire in your ignition harness, and jump that over to the pink wire, which is your ignition wire in your vehicle, okay, to turn it on to make this whole, you know, chain of sequence of events to occur. You need to have that. Most people are going to have one key, okay, that's either not functioning correctly some of the time, um, or they just don't want to buy extra transponder keys for whatever reason. I don't really care what your reason is, but whatever your reason is, let's just say that you've got to have a key. So you're going to take that, turn it to the ignition position. Not the accessory, but the ignition position, the one right before the spring-loaded crank position. That is going to send a signal to pin 85 on your relay. That's going to energize one side of the coil of the relay. 86 and 87 need to go to ground, chassis ground, metal, wherever you can find a good solid ground in your vehicle. And that's going to make 80, 87 connect to pin 30, so it's going to basically invert the 12 volt input to a negative ground output. Pin number 30 is going to be a negative ground output, and that's going to go right into your bypass module, which is the one I discussed previously. Now on here, in the instructions, it's going to call it either a GWR, which stands for ground when running, or an activation input wire. It's looking for a ground signal to activate the bypass. This one only requires four wires. One is your ground when running or negative activation input wire, power and ignition to power the module, and it has a data output wire which goes to the car's computer. So the way it's supposed to work is like this. Key goes in, gets turned on, energizes, clicks the relay, switches the 12 volt signal to a negative output, goes to the bypass module, bypass module starts talking. As you can see, the little Pac-Mans are talking one to another. He says, okay, I'll take it, goes to the car's ECM, shuts down the vehicle's anti-theft system, and allows the car to run fluently, no problem. The only thing that you need to know is that if you have more than one key with a valid transponder chip within it, okay, and you do this, this work, you could cause a problem down the road. <clears throat> Why that could be a problem is that you cannot have more than one transponder signal going to the transceiver simultaneously because it's going to con confuse a computer even worse than if you hadn't performed this, this job in the first place. So make sure that if you only have one key, don't worry about it. Okay, If you don't have any key, like our subscriber asked, you know, what does he do with no key, you're going to have to actually just do it one time, just jumping out 12 volts and turning on your car's ignition just to make this, wake, make this thing work and learn the bypass module. Like these older data bus ones, they actually have on there, I don't know if you see it, but it has a little LED which tells you the status that it actually is working and it tells you because the LED comes on. And once that comes on, every time there on after, every time you turn your key on with a regular metal key, it's going to talk to this module, the module is going to grab 
the, the past key three code that is learned from your car's ECM and talk to the two computers every time. So every time you cut the key on, it's going to throw the same exact signal that it's learned the first time. The car is going to accept it. If it accepted it once, it'll accept it for all time you need and know, as long as the future may be for you and your car ever. So what else can you ask for? That's all there is to it. So ignition, relay, get yourself a harness if you're looking for to make your life a little easier, make, give me a sale. The module, make sure you do your homework, get one that's going to work specifically for your car. It doesn't matter if it's the most expensive one or if it's the least expensive one, just make sure it's the one that's made for your application. The rest will take care of itself. There you have it. That's, that's the fix. Good luck.